So then we are back with more understandings from the Renewed Covenant. This is from the uh, Aramaic English translation and brings us the uh, most important understanding of the prophetic shadows and then comes via layers. What the Greco-Roman manuscripts they do not teach is the understanding of then the layers. It shows on flat surfaces and that's why it's very confusing. So then understanding from the Aramaic English translation you begin then understand what it means the understanding in layers. So then previously it was emphasized the importance of having in mind the understanding of the Torah, the instructions, the prophets and the writings, those are active. They were not by any means abolished. The translation used the wrong word. It's not abolished but completed. Okay, so every time you have then the word abolished or obsolete, it's not truly obsolete. It is completed. So then, when you understand the area that was completed, the sacrifices and the ceremonies involved with the dam of animals, holocausts and then oblations, those were then completed so then because after this completion would come then the first anointing. So then the mind begins then to be educated in terms of what it means completion of the first service. If you then place your mind in absolute or then the word um, no longer used or then eliminated, then you don't understand later what it means the first anointing because the first anointing came because the section related with his coming then was completed. But as we understand the area of completion then later in Shavuot, then we understand the nearing line. The nearing line came because of the complete area of the first service. So then comes as layers. From the time of Moses, the church is started. Then they went through the Red Sea, near the mountain. So then the nearing understanding became evident. From there, Moshe went up the mountain. He received the holy laws. He came down, then they established then the first tabernacle. Then the first service then was introduced. Later they were brought then to the promised land. And they, they merely had a transfer from then the desert tabernacle to the promised land. So then they trained for more than a thousand years. Why did they train so much? Because they were placing under the control their flesh. So then when he came, he brought then the first anointing. When he himself then was sacrificed on a stick, then the areas of the animals' sacrifices, they were then completed. Not obsoleted. They were completed. Because if you have the word obsolete in your mind, then you think the entire laws were then obsolete. But it's not true. Only those areas related with the sacrifices, because he was the ultimate sacrifice. He did not sacrifice himself for the abolishment of the instructions and the Torah and the prophets. But he came to complete the first part. Spring feast. So then he introduced the first anointing. But he only came then in this area of then sacrificing himself was because of then it would complete then the area of the sacrifices of animals. 
the time that he died on a stake, then those animals' sacrifices no longer had a meaning. There was no longer a reason for those. Then he introduced the second service. And he brought then the first anointing. So then the first anointing, as we can understand, truly came in Shavuot. He himself was the anointing in person. Okay, so let's make it clear. When he came, Yahweh himself, he brought with him the anointing. It is true. Then the time that he sent the uh, disciples two by twos, and then later more people in groups, then they gave them samples of these anointing. So they went and they healed, cast out devils. They came back with great reports, with glad reports. So then the word that he sent through his disciples came back completed. And they had joy. So then those were only samples while he himself, as the Creator, walked the earth. So then, later, in Shavuot, then truly came the anointing that would be used in His people through the seven functions of Elohim. Seven spirits of Elohim, seven functions. That's why there are no giftings of any kind of a Holy Spirit outside of the camp. Only there is the Ruach HaKodesh and His functions. And those are performed by the set-apart, saved Hebrews when they are in their camps for the benefit of the Gentiles. So then the whole understanding then starts then when a person understands it was completed, so then. It doesn't stop there. Completed, so then, the second service then was established. It continues. It's not obsolete and then abruptly halted. No, it was the prophetic understanding. There was a layer of salvation. Salvation came then because then Moshe brought them out of Egypt and then the line came with the prophetic understanding as a layer. As it then came through, then an area was simply completed up to that point because it was then holocausts, oblations and sacrifices. Those were then substituted by His presence, but then continued on. It's a continuous line. So then later they were told to go around the world then and form holy lands because have any mind. This is the very model used from the previous, from the first service, then it would be used in the future as the church going around the world forming holy lands. So then people un understand what it means first then what Moshe did, what he received as a model and then later would be used as the church. So then every time you read Torah, Prophets, Instructions, or Writings, those are yet active. The only section of it from the first service completed were the sacrifices, oblations, holocausts. Those were then completed, so then the first anointing came. Because he came to complete only half. That's why you have to understand only half of the Torah, half of the prophets were completed in the substance of them. In reality, he brought the first anointing and he completed only half. The anointing was complete of the first portion. Try to understand. However, the prophetic understanding of the Torah and the prophets and the writings 
those are related with only half of its completion. So then, being faithful while transitioning from the first service and the second service, remaining faithful with then changes done to the second service. That's why you have the Megillah of Hebrews. Those are updates, so then you can understand. So then, completed, so then, the second service is then established. And, so then, the second service, then you read the Hebrews. The Hebrews are the updates of the second service, so then they would go around the world then and form holy lands. But it's not after the Hebrew Megillah. The orders were given when he ascended. Before his ascension, he did explain, wait until then, Shavuot, until Ruach HaKodesh is given, then make yourselves groups and go around the world forming holy lands. That's why he gave them samples going in tiny groups. Tiny groups there, tiny groups there, tiny groups there, tiny groups there. They had lots of groups going out because of what he told them to do. Those were samples of them going around the world forming holy lands. So then we begin to understand the time of the seat of the nearing line is ending. So then the true church from the time of the Shilishim, Shaul, Shimon, those times then are coming back. Because as we understand it from Revelation, the 60th chapter, what does it state? Then at the end of the 60th chapter of Revelation, you would find at the end of the chapter, then the Gentiles or the Goyim are no more. So then, at this point, you begin to understand then the prophetic line. Because the second service is related with the era of the church. Era of the church. And the era of the church related with the Goyim or Gentiles ends at the end of the sixth chapter of Revelation. But then, from the seventh until the end, you must refer back then to the previous covenant, the prophets, and then obviously the base of the prophets is the Torah. The Torah is the foundation. So every time then you refer to the prophets, then you must understand that under the prophets are the instructions and it is the Torah. The instructions. Because the prophets, they can't say in their own name. They must be endowed with an anointing founded in a Torah, in instructions. So then by the end of the 60th chapter of Revelation, no more Gentiles. So then you have to close the renewed covenant as Gentile related. The only portion of it you maintain from the 7th chapter until the end is from the 7th chapter until the end. The rest of it is closed. Then it's pure wrath. So then the promise of the wrath that was given to Shlimon or Solomon comes. Then he explained also the other prophets such as Isaiah. And then you read then also the autumn feast. It came from the Torah. So foundation Leviticus 23rd chapter 23rd verse through the 44th. That's the vengeance revelation. Then you have then the prophets on top of it because they are founded upon the instructions. Comes then as an example Isaiah, Yeshiahu and Daniel. And those are direct linked with the revelation. 
So then the entire era of the church then it is placed aside because no more Goyim, no more Gentiles. So through these areas you begin to maintain the layers and understanding of the prophetic. So then every time you read then related with the Torah, the instructions and the prophets, when it comes to the Hebrews there was merely a completion. So then the second service then was introduced. That's why you have the Hebrews in the scriptures. Gives you what it means the second service, thus the church. And it was then set up by the model learned through Moses. Never changed. Has to have a perimeter has to have a tabernacle and then the tents and then the Levites. The Levites, the services of the Levites is to maintain the spiritual near in line clean. Only the saved Goyim in the Mashiach can be then linked with this line. The rest of them in iniquity are going to be removed from the near in line. They are going to be thrown in the dark places because this line was taken by the seat. And those of the places of the dark, they are going to return to the dark. And then those that are from the light are going to be reintroduced into the nearing line. So then when you read the sixth chapter of Revelation, then you have an understanding of the souls of those faithful Goyim under the altars. Gives you the understanding they were relinked to where they belonged. And those then evil and practicing iniquity, they are going to be outside of the nearing line. That's why then they are going to unite themselves and try to destroy the camps. It's a spiritual understanding but must be done because the time of the seat is ending. It must end and then we must enter into revelation. There is no way for the earth to come together and try to avoid because it is a prophetic mandate. And it has to come to pass. And then it's coming and then there is no way of then going around it. So then when you read then Revelation, you understand what it truly means. Because the near in line must be maintained by the saved Hebrew brothers in the level of the Levites. They are going to maintain the lives of the Goyim outside. Can you imagine how important this is? They are going to maintain their lives. Their lives are going to be in their hands. As they minister to Yahweh Himself in each holy of holies of each camp. So then they maintain their lives. The period of the seat is ending. So then this spiritual line that we have today was not there before Shavuot. They had to be obedient to the law for them to receive a united presence with the Creator. The nearing line was a gift given Shavuot for the Gentiles for the second service church era. But then watch this very closely. By the end of the sixth chapter of Revelation, the nearing line then is ended. Do you understand? Because the nearing line then was maintained by each camp. So then, when do you understand, then the nearing line then is no longer used starting at the seventh chapter. Then you understand we have to refer back then to the previous covenant as they are obedient 100% to the Torah, the prophets, and instructions, and the writings. 
So there is a purpose for this nearing line that we hear in the spirit, but at the moment is contaminated, but is being taken over by the Levites. They are the guardians of this nearing line. Because understand, as the Levites then were the guardians of the rituals, and then the Hebrews guardians of the oracles, so they are the guardians of their nearing line. It's theirs. But then he went in disrepair many centuries ago. But then the nearing line is being restored. It's returning to the hands of the Levites so they can maintain our lives. The Goyim, the Gentiles, faithful Gentiles in the Messiah. So when you reach then the 6th chapter at the end, then the number of those Goyim or Gentiles are going to be slaughtered are completed. Then is pure wrath from there. From the 7th until the very end is pure wrath. Because those of the dark, they are going to try to come out of the dark and they can't. Because they had an experience before of being in a nearing line, not theirs. They are in iniquity. They don't deserve being in a nearing line. Do you understand? Time of deceit. Only those that are faithful Goyim, faithful Gentiles, can have then the linkage with them. The rest of them must go out of the nearing line. They must be turned back to the dark places because that's where they came from. They practice iniquity. So as the Levites, they are more aware of this very crucial and important job. So then they understand. They must set up camps and then begin to resume the second service once known during the time of Shaul. Because then later, when this second service is perfected, then the temple is going to be rebuilt. But prior of the rebuilding of the temple, then their services perfected in each camp is going to give them Yushalim and Israel to be cleansed from then paganism. Because their prayers, the prayers of the Levites, are going to be so strong. It's going to have a, a huge movement in the spirit. And then the pagans are going to come into the knowledge of the Messiah. So then when you read the 61st chapter of Isaiah or Yeshiahu, then you begin to understand then the repairing and the refurbishment of the old desolations. And then the Gentiles, then, or the Goyim, or the strangers, in quote, would then build for them. Because they are going to be part of the Messiah. And then the temple is going to be rebuilt. And at some point, those tables of stones are going to be shown to the world. Because the Ark of the Covenant was already found. And the Ark of the Covenant is in Israel. It was found in 82. That's why from that time there is a push in order to regain the understanding of the Levitical priestly line. But only in a second service level. Because they must complete then the last standing orders. And those were then the service of the second service. The church era. Going around the world forming holy lands. And their united prayers. That's what's going to bring then the pagans to the knowledge of the Messiah. And then the temple is going to be rebuilt. So it starts making more sense, doesn't it? So then when you read the understanding from Hebrews. The areas completed. 
were the areas only where the dam of animals were used, sacrifices, holocausts, and then oblations. Those were completed, so then, through him, he brought the first anointing, and then the church continues. There was then a period of time of transition from the first to the second, and then they would yet go around the world forming holy lands. So then, later, Nehashtan began to persecute those camps. So much that in 1009 he went so far as destroying then the tomb in Jerusalem. Then, it was the absolute top of it, then he was put in prison. Thus, the first thousand years. Then he started of his prison, because the first thousand was from the time then Yahweh himself ascended. That was the first thousand where his people ruled, the set apart. And then when Nahashtan went to prison, in the destroyer facet, then the deceit had taken over their near line. And that's where we were born, during deceit. Crazy ideas of churches being outside of the camp, non-existent. The church is the very camp taught by Moses. But there were then transitions during that time. A transition from the desert into the promised land. And then from there he came, the Messiah came, gave them the first service. Then they were told to go around the world forming holy lands. And to practice the second service. Because in the future there is a second portion yet coming to them is the second portion where they're going to preach the word and to teach as with a stick of iron and as we understand from the spring feast the time was 490 days half of the Torah half of the prophets so then the other half is 490 days so then the vengeance until the world end is going to be 490. Those big numbers from Daniel, if you trace back, has to match with the 490 period. The precise timing when it's going to start, that's absolute in the hands of the Creator. But what we know is the first thousand years from his ascension his people ruled a thousand and nine then Nahashtan the destroyer he then destroyed the tomb then started the first thousand years when he was in prison and then the deceit had taken over however there is then the time when he spent a couple days with the Samaritans a thousand years each couple of thousand from there so covers the first thousand when the people ruled the other thousand in prison and then this ending of this couple thousand years is being reduced but we don't know when it's going to be reduced or how many years the reduction would be but we know that's for the sake of the elect what does it mean so then the saved the Hebrews return to their camps and then resume the second service because the lives of the Goyim depend upon them in other words they must maintain the nearing line clear and clean because wrath is coming and there is no way of going around this fact it's going to get done So then, we begin to understand, and the importance of a startup camp is absolutely crucial. So then, we are more acquainted with the many prophetic layers yet to come. Because as we enter then Revelation, there is as much as 12 layers at the same time. 
So then we are then starting a camp. And we are then involved with the very plan that Moshe had set in place and then transitioning from the deceit ending the seed of time into the truth of the church so then the second service can be then perfected. And those that are practicing iniquity they are going to be thrown back into the world. This is the meaning of it. Because people they have stolen for many years the nearing line. And then Israel and the faithful Goyim and the Mashiach, they are in a reversed state of Yom Kippur. So then these understanding is going to be reversed. So then we begin to understand what it means of being linked with the spiritual nearing line and then maintained by the Levitical priests in each camp. Much more coming up.